I'd like to welcome Sean Conley uh, to this conversation about muscular hypertrophy, strength, and uh, some testing that has been done by his rehab group. He's a doctor of physical therapy and is spends most of his time in Michigan. Tell us what you have found. Right. Awesome. Thanks for having me, first of all, there, John. Been, uh, been a lot of fun work on the study, but uh, so recently I just conducted a study looking at your initial strength training protocol using the X3. Um, I wanted to compare it to some other protocols that have been out for years. Um, so the ACSM is one of the big ones that I used. You know, they do the whole three to five set, 10 to 12 reps, 70 to 80%, one rep max, uh, eight to 10 exercises a day kind of thing. Just to be clear, um, the sort of recommended American College of Sports Medicine programming uh, they're, they're official sort of, this is what you should do for muscular hypertrophy. And uh, how many sets per workout is Three their recommendation sets. and how many workouts per week? Yeah, it's, it's lofty, um, which was 6% of Americans age 18 and over actually meet the recommendation for strength training. And part of it is probably because it's very lofty. So it's three to five sets of 10 to 12 repetitions um, using 70 to 80% of your one rep max for eight to 10 different exercises, three to four days a week is their kind of their traditional recommendation. Three to five sets per workout, or is that per exercise? Per exercise. How many exercises per workout? Eight to 10. Oh, so dozens <laughs> of sets, dozens of sets per workout. Yep. Yeah. And then um, oh, and that could be like 70 sets per workout, like two hours of work per day. How many days a week? Three to four. Uh, that makes some sense. Just standard weightlifting. And then in your study, what did you compare it to? So I did the traditional ACSM protocol. Um, I wanted a few different protocols. So another one that I used was Mike Menser's protocol. You know, he'd do a lot of one set to complete failure kind of stuff. And then the traditional X3 protocol that you made, you know, a few years ago when you, when you created the X3 using variable resistance, which are, uh, very high quality, heavy duty latex bands to, you know, put a lot more strain on muscle tissue compared to joints. Um, and so my big thing as a, a doctor one is that I like to work out. I don't have time. I see patients all day long. I'm a coach. I'm a trainer for a professional team in Detroit for a semi-professional team in Detroit. Um, I'm a professor. I'm running a business. I'm a clinic owner, clinic director. I, yeah. I don't have time. So I'm, you know, me personally, I'm looking for something that I could do 10, 15 minutes a day and get really good results. And the old go to the gym for two hours a day thing, I just couldn't do it anymore. And so yeah, I'm scrolling through Facebook one day. I see your book, you know, weightlifting is a waste of time. Of course, that piques my interest with my background. Let's see what this guy has to say. So, you know, read your book, probably I think in a day. And it's very well written. A lot of good, high quality research studies you had in there. I reached out to your company and you, and I want to do a study. I want to compare this. I want to see if, and you know, no offense, I want to see if this guy is just full of it or, you know, if he knows yeah. what he's talking about. <laughs> okay. I, I mean... <laughs> There's a lot of people who want to see if I'm full of it. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you actually put it to the test because a lot of people, smart people put it to the test. Stupid people jump to conclusions, usually wrong. I'm, I'm glad you, you wanted to run the test. And uh, in this study, I provided the equipment we recommend, and that was it. And you provided some X3 and, and for my patients, you know, one of the main things that I hear you know, for the past, I've done a lot of stuff. I'm a, a strength and conditioning specialist, exercise specialist, exercise physiologist, uh, doctor, personal trainer. Uh, the main excuse over and over and over again is I just don't have time. And I talk to my patients. Hey, I gave you a couple exercises to do at home. Did you do them? Nah, I just didn't have time for it. My questions mostly are going to be between, so the, the Mike Menser protocol, you know, yeah. with a, just the one set to failure with standard weightlifting. I know how that went. I mean, mostly because I read your paper, okay. but the most interesting thing to the audience is comparing the high volume 
regular weightlifting program that the American College of Sports Medicine recommends compared to the standard X3 program, which is only 10 minutes per day, six days a week. One fifth of the amount of time yeah. that the ACSM protocol requires. I mean, that was huge. So we looked at uh, myself and I had someone helping me who did a lot of the analysis of the data. Just, uh, I just want to give a shout out to her. Thanks a lot, Mary Best. Really appreciate it. So I measured muscle hypertrophy. Um, I measured strength and I measured body fat percentage. You know, the three main things that people starting an exercise program want to improve. You know, people want to lose fat. They want to gain strength. They want to build muscle. So that's the, the main things we measured. So ACS, so we'll do it one at a time. ACSM versus X3. Who had the better co body composition improvements? So those were all fairly close. Uh, when we looked at all the numbers, all the data, we had the, you know, the traditional X3 group and then the traditional ACSM group and measuring body fat, strength, hypertrophy, all that fun stuff. We found that there was really no statistically significant difference between the three other than the X3 edged out people on uh, the strength and the muscle hypertrophy in certain muscle groups. The bicep was one of them. Um, Double check. I believe the chest was another one where the X3 actually edged everyone out. So, you know, they, they edge people out on a few, but not a huge difference. That the traditional ACSM protocol, the average time that it took people was about 90 minutes a day, about an hour and a half, you know, three days a week. They had to drive to the gym, they had to use the weights, they weren't allowed to use machines because I wanted, you know, I, I wanted the instability. So they had to use free weights. They had, depending on where they were, 30, 45 minute drive to the gym and they had to drive home. They had an hour and a half at the gym. You're looking yeah. at a good chunk of your day that you're just going to the gym. And the huge difference with the study was that the X3 group, average time, 10 minutes a day. Same result, same strength, same hypertrophy. Well, better results hypertrophy. actually. Yeah. Much more efficient, much more effective. I've been talking to Dr. Milo Wolf. You know him. He talks about the length and partials. In fact, as scientists go, I would probably call him the lengthened partial guy. He's going to have more answers than anybody else because he's just reading about it the most and he's conducted a lot of research on it uh, and out raising money for uh, funding for projects on lengthened partials. Uh, one of the last papers he was involved with talked about lengthened supersets. And there was a lot of growth associated with these lengthened supersets, more than with the standard uh, set of weight training. The drawback with lengthened supersets is they're kind of hard to do because once you go to failure full range, you're kind of done yeah. with a regular weight. But he, he did the study with um, or the researchers, the rest of them, I, like, I, I don't want to take credit away from anybody. Uh, so in that study, they talked about how with the calves, you can continue doing shorter repetitions, even if you've gone to full range fatigue. So the calves are sort of unique in that. So he did a lot of reps in the stretched range of motion after fatigue. That's why he calls it a lengthened superset because okay. it's a full range of motion set. And then once you go to fatigue, then you do the shorter reps just in that stretched portion of the movement. But that's how every single X3 set works mm -hmm. with diminishing range. Yep. And so I think these big hypertrophy differences, like we've always seen incredible muscle growth with X3. And now I knew when developing the product, okay, everybody's going to get a lot stronger because of variable resistance, just going to fatigue with variable resistance stimulates a lot more strength. The hypertrophy, there, were, well, there wasn't a lot of research out there when I started X3 on specifically that. And I think because as we go to fatigue and, and those, the, those that don't know what I'm talking about, when you go to fatigue with diminishing range, length and partial. So I'm doing however many repetitions I can do. And then when I can't get there, I do like a three quarter rep and I might do a few of those and then I can't get there anymore. And then 
I'm doing an even shorter repetition. And finally, I go to fatigue maybe five times, five different points, diminishing back until my last repetition is maybe an inch. And that's how every X3 set works. I think that really has a lot to do with that added growth, even with the lower exercise time, the lower amount of exercise volume yeah. that we use with X3. Really exciting. We're launching a hypertrophy program, basically the volume of the ACSM program, not, not quite as high because with variable resistance, it's very taxing. Like you get exhausted real quick. So oh, yeah. it's not nearly that amount of volume, but it, there's more volume than the standard X3 program. And the priority is large muscle growth yeah. and large growth of all muscles, including the small ones. Yeah. I look forward to reading that one too. Yeah, man. Well, I, I really appreciate this analysis you did and you presented it at the ACSM annual Congress, correct? Yep. Yeah. I'm uh, hoping to apply and present it a couple more. I'm working. proud of you, man. Of course, mine were mostly having to do with bone density. I presented the World Congress on osteoporosis and musculoskeletal disease. That was fun. Uh, did you get any like really off the wall questions from other researchers? People are, bands can't do that because most people, you know, PT, we think of bands, we think the little teeny tiny TheraBand. Yeah, TheraBand, yeah. Pound of resistance. It's like two pounds, right. Yeah. And then you bust out the, you know, your big elite band that's 600 pounds resistance. So, okay. So I can see how that's different. Uh, it's like 800 pounds if you're tall because <laughs> it stretches further and there's more resistance there. 10 minutes a day compared to 90. Everybody has yep. 10 minutes. Well, this is great. Thank you so much. And uh, as you present it, we'll do another one of these and uh, maybe you, you know, you get some amazing questions and uh we can de not design another study and, and uh, so sort of run an analysis again. Yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome. Happy awesome. to help. Anything, anything I can do to help you guys out, spread the word. If you want to do any more of these on different subjects, let me know. I'm open. Thanks, Sean.